Hey, what's happening guys? Here is a very unique uh, AC to DC. It's listed as a buck converter. I would consider this basically a full output power supply. In fact, it is a two channel AC to DC power supply. And uh, this was graciously sent out to us from IC station free of charge for our consideration. So I'd like to thank them for their continued support of the channel. Um, this is possibly one of the scariest power supplies I've come across in a long time. I haven't plugged it in yet, and I'll show you why as we go through this. And uh, I think you'll be able to understand. So let's take a look, starting from the input side over here, which looks pretty good. This is a very nice heavy-duty spring clamp for your AC input, but it's not grounded. So that's kind of scary there. Then we go through a fuse, good. Uh, filter cap, also good. Choke, good. Uh, rectifier, good, but look how, I don't know if you can see how tight that is in there. Here's a piece of plain graph paper. Okay, that is that is touching on both sides. So we're looking at, you know, what, thousandth of an inch? Not going to be a lot of heat dissipation going on there. So then we come over here and we have this device, which is NTC 5D-9. It's a thermistor. We got a nice big filter cap here. So, so far, this is all looking pretty good. Uh, we have our transformer here. We have adjustment for channel one, channel two. We've got some passives. We got an op amp. You know, nothing spectacular going on there. Then we come over here to our output side, and I'm going to change the camera angle here. Okay, here is our output side. Now what we've got here is our switch mode chip. This is from XL Semi, and it is the XL4015. It is a 5 amp chip. This inductor is laying across at least two legs, perhaps three legs of the chip. And that's how this thing came. So that's the main reason I didn't plug this in. See how the inductor sticks out beyond the edge of the board? So probably when they put that in the box, it gets forced over like that. That is not good. We gotta be careful again that we don't come over here too far because there's a little capacitor laying there. We don't wanna hit that either. So then here we have our two output channels channel 1 and channel 2. All right, you know, so far not too bad. But again, the whole thing whoop, wrong direction. There's no ground here. You have to consider that any point of this circuit is live at mains voltage at all times. This needs to be sold and marketed in an enclosure. You know, you've got somebody who's unfamiliar with working with mains electricity who wants to plug this in, and it is good up to 220 volts. It's good between 90 and 220 volts. You know, you're talking deadly, deadly current could be passed to you right quick by touching any point of this circuit. All right, let's take a look at the underside. Got to tilt it up so we don't have... Uh, reflections from the LED lights on here. Now you're looking here. This is a ground plane track. This is a ground plane track. Well, how do I know that? Well, we tested it. So we bring the meter here. Put it on continuity mode. So you can hear that pretty well there. So if I touch ground here, ground, ground. Those are ground tracks. Now, this particular track in here is not a ground track. 
it is in fact channel one positive track and if I come in here with a set of calipers zero that out and measure that track spacing out and you know this is simply an estimation but I'm doing the best I can here We're looking at a quarter of a millimeter. Wow. That is tight. Between the ground and the positive output from that, that is not a lot of track spacing. And then here, separation of the transformer, there's no anti-tracking slot. They've drilled holes. I mean, granted, the spacing there is excellent. We're looking at 13 and a half millimeter spacing. That's fantastic. But why why go to a little bit of trouble to drill the holes, but not go and route them out to make an anti-tracking slot? The only anti-tracking slot on this board is right here, underneath this filter capacitor. And the width on it is also not super. I think I got 0.8 millimeter, 0.92. So we're talking less than a millimeter of spacing there. This is a uh, pretty scary board. Okay, so we got the inductor well away from everything there. I've had a pretty good look at the board, and I'm pretty well certain that it's not going to blow up when I plug it in, but you never know. So I got the kilowatt here. We can see how much power is going in. That way we can judge its efficiency. So let's see what happens when we plug her in. It's drawn right around a watt. We've got an LED there. I'm not going to move the board. We will bring in the meter, which I have set for voltage. And we'll check these channels and see where they're at. Try the first channel. 25 volts and the second channel 12 volts Let's see if we leave them in there will they stay? Nope Come on Not going to play nice. Let me get some different leads. Okay, I soldered a couple wires on there. And we'll use some nice clip on leads. And we'll plug her back in. Seems to be drawing about an amp still, or I mean a watt still, which is what you'd expect. I mean, nothing's going on, I'm not drawing any power. So, show me money penny. So I believe we're hooked to channel one, and this would be the channel one voltage adjust here. Let's see if anything happens. Not so much. Try the other one. Yeah, they're totally mislabeled. This is actually channel two. So 
See how low we can take her down to here. I think they said they'd go down to like two volts, something like that. 1.2. So that's probably the, uh, the voltage regulator's lowest point. Let's put it at 3 volts. Right about there. I have cobbled together a rig for us to test this little deadly power supply. We have the power supply hooked up via these twisted wires going over to the DC electronic load. Uh, what frequencies are they twisted for? Well, somewhere between 1 hertz and 20 gigahertz. Can't be real exact, you know. So when I turn up the knob on the electronic load, we will be able to see... Uh, it, it'll place a load on the power supply and we'll be able to see the effect it has on the oscilloscope. Now this says 3.2 volts. But I know this is 3 volts because I checked it with, an, with a uh, multimeter. And here's a multimeter you guys haven't seen before because I just found it in a box. It is the Fluke 26.3. Nice meter. This is what I use at work. Let's get that in there so you guys can see it. And then we'll get right on the outputs here. Three point oh four one. So yeah, we are right on the money. All right, take a look at the scope as it sits right now. Hold on a second. Let me get the measurements up. If I can call your attention to the fourth, fourth measure, no, third measurement down. That is our peak to peak voltage which is somewhere between 1.6 millivolts. It's not terrible. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the load up here. And if we take a look again, we are still at 1.6 millivolts. So that seems pretty good. We're not getting more noise in Ripple with the uh, unit in use. Let's see if I can increase the voltage here. Gotta figure out which one of these it is. Not electrocuting myself. Yes, yeah, so I know that fan is noisy. There we go, we're going up. Back here, can you see it? 3.8. We'll take it up to, let's say, 5 volts. Close enough. And also, for those of you who are interested, it is pulling, let's see that not, 0.7 watts. Now, our peak to peak has gone up to 3.2 millivolts. Honestly, 3.2 millivolts is not bad out of a DC power supply for noise and ripple. I'm fine with that. It's simply the uh, the overall sketchiness of the construction of this that gives me pause. So I cannot recommend this power supply. I consider you all my friends, and I would be very hurt if anything happened to any of you based on a product that I recommended. So yeah, it's not gonna not gonna get a recommendation. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys. Keep the channel alive. That's it. I'm out. Peace.